Hello, and welcome back to this Introduction to Seaborne tutorial. My name is Kimberly Fessel, and today I'll be talking about the Seaborne strip plot. To build a strip plot for these data, I'll first start with a blank number line. Then I want to create a scatter point for each value in my data set. So here's the value at 4, and at 5, etc. But something happens when I get to the second number 1. If I try to create yet another scatter point in the same position, you'll see that I can't see the new scatter point, so I have a collision. And the same thing happens when I get to the number 4. And by the time I finish filling out the full 8 data points, I can actually only see 6 scatter points. So the strip plot gets around this issue with something called jitter. That basically just means I'm randomly going to move each dot either a little above or below this line so that it can see all eight data points. And now we have our Seaborn strip plot. So jitter is one of the defining features of the strip plot. Like the swarm plot, the strip plot is a categorical scatter plot. In fact, the swarm plot and the strip plot are really conveying very similar sorts of information. So let's go ahead and see a comparison between those two in a little bit more detail. Both the swarm plot and the strip plot are categorical scatter plots, and the goal of each is to represent your data values as circular dots. However, those dots are arranged differently in these two types of figures. In the swarm plot, dots are arranged in neat vertical columns, so you can estimate the distribution of your data by looking at the width of that swarm plot. In the strip plot, however, dots are arranged randomly in the vertical direction which means we can no longer use the width to estimate the distribution function. What's typically done is that points will be transparent so that you can use the color intensity to estimate the density of your data. So because that strip plot is distributing those values randomly instead of the regular intervals that the swarm plot uses, you can typically display quite a bit more data on a strip plot than a swarm plot. By the way, if you're not familiar with what the swarm plot is, you can go ahead and check out my previous video all about the swarm plot within Seaborn. Now that we know what the strip plot is, let's go ahead and check out some Seaborn code. In order to demo this code in Seaborn, I'll start off by importing the Seaborn library and aliasing it as SNS. Then I'll load some data from the Seaborn library and drop a couple of null values. These data are about cars, and each row represents one specific car. I'm going to set my style to be white grid, and then I'm going to do one final bit of data cleaning. I'll filter down to cars with only four, six, or eight cylinders. So I'm doing this really just to make my visuals look a little bit cleaner because most cars fall into one of those three buckets. So now that my data is loaded in, I can go ahead and build a strip plot. All I have to do is reference the Seaborn library and call up a strip plot. And I'm just passing in whatever data I'd like. Here I'm going to look at the weight of the cars, which is a panda series, but you could also pass a list or numpy array if you'd prefer. So here's my strip plot. I have one circular dot for every single car in the data set, and I have the weights ranging from about 1600 all the way up to 5000. But the real beauty of a strip plot is when we split our data up into separate categories. So now instead of just passing the weight, I'm also going to pass the car's origin. Seaborn will interpret this as I want the weight along the x-axis and the origin, the different categories, along the y. And so now we can see that the cars from the USA really range the gamut, while cars from Japan or Europe are definitely on the lighter side. Uh, one other thing I should point out, so you can pass the pandas series separately if you'd prefer, or you can pass the entire data frame to this data argument, and then all you have to do is reference the names of each of those columns. That produces the exact same graph. One final property, if you do have a separate category if, that you would like to split your data up uh, in, you can pass that to the hue parameter. So let's try to also split up by the cylinders. So now you'll see Seaborn is interpreting that as the color of the dot should match the cylinders of the car. And what's really happening here, the Japanese and European cars are mostly four cylinders, so they are on the lighter side, whereas the US is producing some eight cylinder cars over on the heavier side. If you'd prefer to have one strip for each hue, you can change this property called dodge. You can set it to be true. 
And now you'll see what that's doing. It's just splitting out each of those different hues into a separate strip plot of its own. So that could be useful if you do wanna see a little bit more granularity among those different cylinders. And one final thing to tell you, right now we're looking at the weight on the x-axis and the origin or the categorical value on the y-axis. If you'd prefer to have vertical strip plots instead of these horizontal strip plots, you can just switch those too. And so now we'll see strips going up and down. Um, I actually prefer the other way with the horizontal strip plots, but you might have a potential case where this is more appropriate and all you have to do is just switch which one is X and which one is Y. Now that we know the coding basics, let's check out the styling options for that Seaborn strip plot. The first thing I wanna to talk to you about is jitter. So if you'll remember from the beginning of this video, I said that jitter is the way that we can see each of those data points. If you, for some reason, would like to turn the jitter off, you can see what that looks like. All the points now collapse down onto one line. And so it's very, very difficult to see each of those individual data points. But one thing you might actually want to do, instead of completely turning this jitter off, you could potentially change the amount of jitter in your graph. So let's say we wanna reduce down to 0.05. So now my jitter is, is still there, but it's much smaller than it is by default. And so let's look at that in a little bit more detail using a widget. So the default amount of jitter in Seaborn is 0.1, and you can decrease that if you'd like, as I was just showing you, or you can increase that, that if that makes more sense for your problem. Just one kind of note on what these values mean. If you think about the width of each of these categories as being one, the jitter is um, how much plus or minus a point could possibly be. So if I increase this jitter all the way up to 0.5, you'll see that now the points are completely spread across this full width of one. So plus 0.5 and minus 0.5, and we're stretching across the entire category. The other thing you might want to do in a strip plot, if you're doing some styling, you might want to change the transparency of your dots. So here's what we're working with right now. If it's difficult for you to see each of these individual dots, you could actually make those points more transparent by setting your alpha. Um, alpha of 0.5 is going to make those a little bit more see-through, so you can start seeing where points overlap each other. And that would potentially help you understand the density of your data. You can also change the size of each of those dots. So the default size is five, but you can of course increase those points if you'd prefer. Let's amp that up to eight. One thing that does happen when you are increasing those points, you start to see more overlap of the points and it can become even harder to distinguish each individual dot. So if you are increasing the size, you might decide to decrease your alpha and make those dots a little bit more transparent. That way you can see where there are overlaps. On the other hand, if you are decreasing the size, now the points are so small that you might completely um, turn this transparency off and make those uh, fully solid points. You also have full range to edit those dots if you'd like. So one thing you can do, you can change, you can add a little line around each point if you'd prefer. So now I'm just creating a little line around the outside of each of those dots. And the default color for that line is going to be a gray, but you could change that edge color to be whatever you'd like with this edge color property. There we go, now I switched it to black. One final thing to let you know, um, the, anything that you can do to change the marker style in a matplotlib scatter plot, you can also do in a strip plot. For example, you can change, instead of having circular dots, you could have stars. So loads and loads of things you can play around with to make those points appear exactly as you would like. Speaking of all those options, let's check out an example gallery so that you can see what's possible with the Seaborn strip plot. So thanks so much for joining me and learning about the Seaborn strip plot. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up below. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that you'll be alerted when I post more videos just like this one. Until next time.